do you and your child qualify for the Guardian Advocate Program? In this section, we're going to be covering whether or not you and your child qualify to participate in the Guardian Advocate Program. In part four of this session, where we covered the Florida statutes, we spent a little bit of time discussing the qualifications the ward needs to qualify for the Guardian Advocate Program. And we said that if the ward doesn't meet these qualifications, that the applicant or the parent would have to file under plenary guardianship or rely on a guardianship alternatives. So at this point, this should really just be a recap of what we discussed in that section. If you remember from part four, if your child has one of the developmental disabilities enumerated in the guardian advocate statute, which were cerebral palsy, autism, spina bifida, Prader-Willi syndrome, Down syndrome, and Phelan McDermid syndrome, then your child automatically qualifies to use the expedited guardian advocate program. We also discussed that if your child has some other syndrome or diagnosis, then chances are the court will simply accept the application without continuing the analysis further. Now, in the case of a child who does not have a diagnosis but has some form of intellectual or developmental disability, then the child's IQ must be below 70 and their functional age has to be below what the reasonable standard is in the community where that child lives. In all cases, the child's developmental disability had to arise before they turned 18 and there's a reasonable expectation that the child's handicap will continue indefinitely. Now, just a quick side note, a parent recently asked me what would happen if she got guardianship for her child who had autism, and subsequently scientists come up with some miracle drug or cure that restores her child's intellectual capacity. And the simple answer to that question is, if a miracle drug or treatment is discovered that restores a ward's ability to make decisions for him or herself in certain cases, then the guardianship can be modified to restore all or some of their rights. In section 393.12, paragraph 12 of the Guardian Advocate Statute, you'll find guidance on the restoration rights in a Guardian Advocate case. Next, let's take a look at what the requirements are for you to serve as the Guardian Advocate for your child under the Florida statutes. I wanna preface this conversation with something that my friend Yolanda says to me all the time. Now, Yolanda is the mom of Michael, and Michael has the same genetic syndrome that my daughter has, and I know Yolanda through our national support group. So when it comes to dealing with the government or the courts, Yolanda will remind you that the government doesn't wanna take care of any more people with special needs. And she's right. While there are certain requirements that will outright bar you from serving as guardian advocate, you will be asked to disclose a lot of personal things in the application, and for some of you, that may include some unflattering information. But unless you have a criminal history of violent crime, abuse, or have felonies for other crimes, there's very little that will prevent you from becoming a guardian advocate, provided you maintain a good and loving home environment for your child and you give the court a reasonable explanation for any unflattering items in your application. In the next couple of sessions of this workshop, I'll be teaching you how to provide a response to negative or embarrassing items that you might have to disclose in your application, but let's get to the specifics about what could bar you from serving. The Guardian Advocate Statute has certain requirements for applicants who wish to serve as guardian. Those requirements are itemized in section 744.309 of the Florida Statutes. Here's a summary of that section. First, you have to be over the age of 18, which frankly shouldn't be a problem for any of you, but it may be an issue if you wish to appoint the ward's younger sibling as a co-guardian or standby guardian since these requirements will apply to them as well. In your application materials, you must disclose whether you have a disability yourself or have had addiction or mental illness. While it is possible that your application could be denied for these reasons, provided that these items are managed, they are unlikely to prevent you from being appointed as guardian advocate. If you were judicially determined to have engaged in the abuse or neglect of a child or elderly person, in all likelihood, the court will not approve your application. Again, for obvious reasons, the probate court frowns upon a history of violence, abuse, or neglect. If you've been the subject of a confirmed report of abuse, neglect, or exploitation that was either uncontested or upheld, that would be a reason why a court would not allow you to serve as guardian. 
And finally, I provided you with a link of other serious crimes that will prevent you from serving as a guardian advocate. Now, if you've been convicted or pled guilty or no contest to any of these crimes, you will be prevented from serving as a guardian advocate. Basically, what we're talking about here is, number one, any felony for any crime. If you've been convicted, pled guilty, or no contest to any felony crime, you cannot serve as a guardian in Florida, no exceptions. And number two, any misdemeanor crime that involves violence, abuse, or neglect. If you have misdemeanor convictions in your background, then you may still be appointed depending on the circumstances. If this is an issue for you, send me a private message. I or someone from my team can help guide you through this. If you have ever been arrested for any crime, it will be disclosable on your application. So you'll want to immediately start getting some documentation about this from the charging court. We'll be discussing specifics about what you need in part 11 of this session one. Full disclosure, at one time I was a naughty boy in college and I got picked up by the police for something really foolish. Ultimately, it was thrown out of court. There was no conviction. The records were sealed. But for my entire professional life, I have been disclosing this arrest and it is highly embarrassing. And when I apply for guardianship for my daughter, I'm going to have to provide the court with all of the paperwork all over again to disclose this one mishap when I was a clueless 19 year old. So it happens. No big deal. You're in good company. Just disclose it and I'll teach you the best way to do this later in the workshop when we get to the application. Now, I've helped many clients obtain guardianship for their children who have had a prior history with law enforcement or addiction or mental health issues and sometimes all of those things at one time. And if you fall into this camp, don't lose any sleep about it. We'll walk you through the application process and in all likelihood, the court will give you guardianship over your child. See you in the next video.